Here are seven problems with the ATF's proposed rule on frame or receiver and how the ATF wants to use it to create a national gun registry. Hey guys, I'm Phil with the Minuteman Moment. Please stay through to the end of the video because I've got a pertinent question for all of you. And if you're watching our Minuteman videos, a common theme has been the overreach of bureaucracies like the ATF with respect to gun rights. It's bad enough, shameful really, when Congress violates the law by infringing on our constitutionally protected rights. But when some nobody in a federal agency does it, who do we the people hold accountable? That's why today's video is so important. The only way we win is by being informed and engaged. Remember, politicians and bureaucrats will usually go after the person or group they think is weak because they just don't want the pushback. So there's reason number one, the ATF's proposed rule on frame or receiver is a problem. And from here on out, I'll probably just call it receiver. The ATF would rewrite the law so that a single firearm would have numerous receivers. That's because the ATF rule says that a receiver is anything that houses the fire control component, meaning almost every part of a firearm would be a receiver. So let's see how this new rule would apply to your AR-15. Upper, check. Lower, check. Bolt, check. Bolt carrier group, check. Stock, check. Buffer tube, check. Buffer spring, check. Barrel nut, check. Trigger, check. Barrel, check. Or even the magazine, yes sir, check. In total, applying the ATF's expansive definition could mean that one AR-15, just one, might be declared by the ATF to contain as many as 10 or 11 frames and receivers. All these parts would have to be registered with the ATF. And so here's reason number two. It's that the ATF is gonna outlaw homemade firearms. And for anybody that's new to this channel, making firearms at home is older than the American Republic. And in trying to craft this rule, the ATF creates a document with so many clarifications, arbitrary tests, and non-statutory standards that only the ATF is in a position to know what's okay and what lands you in jail. And that's not an accident. That's the way they want it. And you'll have to register your homemade firearm with the ATF if you ever take it into a gun store to sell, repair, or clean. Reason number three we don't like the ATF regulation. The proposed rule targets silencers for even more regulation. If the ATF gets its way, there will be a new law regulating silencers. Just not one written by Congress where that sort of thing belongs. Not that I want new laws on silencers, but that's where that stuff belongs. While suppressors are currently serialized once, the ATF now says silencers can have multiple frames or receivers needing serialization. But the current law doesn't allow this. The ATF never required this, and manufacturers have never done this. The ATF is also changing the definition on silencers from parts designed and intended to create a silencer and replacing that with parts necessary to function as designed because apparently intent no longer matters. In other words, basically the ATF claims that something is a silencer if it contains, and this is important, all the component parts necessary to build a silencer. This is now true regardless of whether they were ever possessed or intended for that use and regardless of whether they were even operable once assembled. You know what else contains all the component parts necessary to build a silencer? A regular, old, boring, off-the-shelf oil can. So let me ask you this. You change your oil? What if you do that and the ATF really wants to make a case against you? Do you think their new definition can be used to charge you or stack up more charges? You betcha. So here's reason number four we oppose the ATF's rule on receivers. They want to create a new definition to regulate privately made firearms, which is broader than just the 80% lowers I talked about earlier. Keep in mind, federal law does not regulate homemade guns. The proposed ATF rule says that an FFL is required to serialize and record a privately made firearm anytime the FFL handles one. This means that should this proposed rule become the rule, every single gun in America will legally be recorded at one point or another. That is by definition a registry. And so here's number five. The ATF is attempting to use a grandfather clause, which doesn't hold any weight as a single modification on the gun, such as upgrading the trigger, 
the brand of flash hider, or even the color of the handguard could potentially cause the ATF to require manufacturers to then serialize each part under the new rule. This leaves the gun industry with two choices. Follow the rule and forego improving and innovating their firearms with the latest and greatest for the consumer, or undergo the extremely tedious process of serializing every part of the firearm. The ATF in this case is falsely pretending to be reasonable and even handed with the gun industry, but they're basically acting in a sinister and malicious manner. And so here's number six. The ATF classification letter system is a real problem and it always has been, but the ATF is trying to institutionalize it in this proposed rule. For those of you that don't know, the classification system is when members of the industry and the gun community submit samples in exchange for the ATF's yay or nay as to the legality of a particular product. But this wasn't authorized by Congress. And by the way, what formal scientific or mechanical training do the ATF examiners have? None. Even though the ATF says it's formalizing the system, again, this wasn't authorized by your legislator, they're still leaving themselves the right to refuse to respond to a submission. That's pretty close to what they call anarcho-tyranny. They're laughing at us. And who's the us? The Americans they're supposedly here to serve. And finally, number seven. This is the big picture, guys. This system, this rule creates a national registry. And when you want to confiscate guns, creating a registry is one of the first places you'd start. And here's how the proposed rule does that. By regulating gun parts as firearms, which would require background checks. Homemade firearms would be registered when they go to an FFL. By requiring dealers to keep all of those records forever, or the FFL can send them to the ATF for scanning and digitization into the agency's central database. So there it is. All the ways the ATF proposed rule on frames and receivers creates a national registry. How does a national registry even prevent crime? Even if someone accepts the premise that for some reason we need a registry, how would it stop a criminal from using a firearm in a crime? It might actually help criminals if they can see who has what guns, how many, how, and where they're stored. All right, so we're gonna stop it right there. And if you want your friends to see this video, please like and share it. And as to my request, which of these proposals that will ultimately lead to a national gun registry do you think is the most egregious? If there's an overwhelming favorite, maybe we're gonna do a video on it. Make sure you check out all of our YouTube content for Minuteman videos, and you can see all of our videos over on the Warrior Poet Society. All right, I'll see you next time.